Hey, Wizard, Wizard Nation. Nation. I'm Elisa Vasquez. And I'm Steve Leone. And you're watching VGTV. There will be a baseball meeting today in the small cafeteria at 2.20 for all those who are interested. JROTC will have their annual drill meet tomorrow in the gym from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Come out and support your cadets. Picture retakes will be held Monday, November 9th. Please sign up in the main office. The European Summer Chip Meeting will be held on Tuesday, November 10th in the cafeteria at 7.30 p.m. 2016 yearbooks are now available for order. You can order them online at yearbookordercenter.com or pick up a form in the main office. Will Sutton here with BGTV Sports. Football beat Pine Bush 7-6 in double overtime on Friday in their final game of the season. Congrats. Good luck to the cross-country team who have sections today at Bear Mountain. And girls swimming continues their sectional meets today and tomorrow at Valley Central. Stress Good luck. is a major issue facing teenagers today. Here's Field Crew with tips on how to handle it. Hi, Amber Blessed here reporting with High School Stress. Now, a lot of kids experience stress, especially during their last two years, because it's one of the most important decisions and times in your life that you make during your high school years. First is to be organized. Have a set study time daily. This will help avoid cramming thereby reducing stress and giving the students a better grade. Second is prioritize. It's great to be involved in a range of different activities, but if school sports and clubs are taking too much of your time, figure out a way to balance it all out. <laughs> Lastly, live a healthy lifestyle. Sleep is a key factor when it comes to wellness. Also, exercise is a great way to blow off steam and get back into being focused. Other ways to alleviate stress, they can meditate, they could do yoga, they could read a great book that they really enjoy, they could get outside, get some fresh air, they could make a to-do list, prioritize their tasks, things of that nature to help alleviate their stress because if they have long-lasting stress, it can lead to physical and mental harm that they may that may affect them for the rest of their lives. I hope my tips were helpful and will get you wizards back on track and have a great rest of the school year. Back to you guys in the studio. Here's Field Crew with one of the volleyball players, Sabrina Lavolsi. I'm here for reporting for BGTV with Sabrina Lavolsi. Now, Sabrina, can you explain why you were in the newspaper? Um, I was in the newspaper because uh, this summer I went to Iowa for the USA Volleyball High Performance Championships and they wanted to do a follow up on the tournament. Now, were you picked or did you try out for the team? There was a weekend tryout. Now, how many teams were at the event? Uh, at the tournament, there was over 100 teams from all over the world, like New Zealand, Canada, Australia, Europe, Asia. Now, Sabrina, do you want to play volleyball in college? Yeah, my biggest goal is to get a Division One scholarship to play volleyball in college. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> Kate King here, signing off for BGTV. Homer? Hey Parker. Hey, what's up? I like your shirt. Oh, thanks. I got it from the school. Can I get one? Well, you can, but nobody submitted anything for the t-shirt designs. Hey, Wizard Nation, maybe you guys should start submitting some designs. Now here's Field Crew with the ins and outs of senior parking. <laughs> senior lot. Um, uh, it, it starts off the whole idea that, that parking in the senior lot is a privilege. <clears throat> so um, expectations first is safety that students will follow all safety rules, um, be courteous to the other drivers out there, obviously not drive too fast uh, or recklessly in the parking lot. But again with it being a privilege <clears throat> rather than a right, um, the expectation also is that students will be academically and behaviorally um, eligible um, if they are not, they will lose their parking privileges. Well, the, the greatest advantage I have there is that there are less spots than seniors. So um, 
you need to get there early. Um, in most cases, there's probably no parking spots available after 7.15. You probably know that better than I. And if there's not a spot available, um, the only other option is over at St. Mary's. We've been very nice to us over the years in allowing our students to park on the outside perimeter. Certainly parking across the street or by the bus garage um, is not allowed, and, and any students who have done that have probably realized that pretty quickly. Dan Heil here from BGTV News in the parking lot with Sam Nachi talking about senior parking. Now I understand something happened to you last week. Can you explain that to me? Yeah, um, there was a vote. I'm not sure for what, but I was told that after, I was told after that they emailed our parents saying that we couldn't park in like the first three lines and um, I wasn't aware because my parents don't really use the internet and uh, I came to school and there were no parking spots and I didn't have time to walk from St. Mary's so I just parked at the bus garage knowing that I wasn't allowed to park there but I figured they'd make an exception and I got a sticker on my window which is an obstruction view but I got a sticker on my window and then they pulled me out of class to move my car to St. Mary's which is like a 20 minute walk from here and I spoke to someone and they said that they're not sure who put the sticker on my car and that it might have been one of the lunch people and I just think that if we had more parking, more senior parking, this wouldn't have been an issue or maybe if they told the kids prior this wouldn't have been an issue. Do you think giving out less passes would help? Um, no, because there's only a certain amount of spots, so, I mean, it is what it is. The amount of spots, they, I mean, they give up a lot of passes, but it doesn't really matter. They should just have more spots. Is there anything that else that they can do to help us? Get more parking. Um, I believe they'll, quite often they get stickered, uh, they get called in, warned, uh, if it occurs on a repeated basis they can lose their actual parking privileges here, and if it still continues they actually can uh, receive um, um, a discipline for it. A lot of times it's, be, you know, students sometimes create their spots and that, the bigger issue is a safety issue for us, because if we have emergency vehicles coming in for whatever reason we need to allow them access, that's why we, we keep uh, the amount of those spots, plus many of those spots are reserved for staff members who need to be here. Yeah. Well, in most cases I don't deal with the uh, the parking violations. I, I know uh, Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Salmon deal with that and it's a, probably a bit frustrating for them. Um, my advice would be to follow the rules so that you can continue to have the privilege of parking uh, in the senior lot. I know it's frustrating, but at the same time um, like I said, we have limited spots and we're trying to give everyone the best opportunity to park there. Dan Heil sent, signing off from BGTV News. The world of politics is really heating up. Here's Field Crew with the local elections. This is Paul Church here for BGTV at Knights of Columbus. I'm here with Eliana DeSanta. How are you? Good. And um, we have a lot of kids in the school turning 18, and a lot of them want to know what the voting process is. Uh, so you could, could you explain that a little bit to me? Sure. The first thing to do is to contact the Board of Elections and get a voter's registration form. You put some information on it, and you send it back. It's important that you send it back in a timely manner, um, because these things do have a deadline. and then you're registered. All right, you get a voter's registration card in the mail with your name, your address, and the polling place where you will vote. It also shows what district you will be voting at. That's important that you bring with you on election day. But if you don't bring it, it's okay. We have you in our records. How do you tell the votes and who does it? Well, we send everything electronically to the Board of Elections, and there they have um, people from each political party and they all get together and count these votes. But today, since it's so modern, the computer does it. So we'll get them the results mostly the same day. So at midnight or when the voting ends? It's close to midnight because they have to count you know, the entire county. But yeah, it's usually the same day. 
looks like something a lot of our students should look forward to next year. And uh, thank you for your time. You're welcome. And this is Paul Sears from BGTV signing out. So Wizards, make sure you go register to vote when you turn 18. This year, our girls varsity swim team is undefeated. Here's field crew with their sectional qualifiers. Hey Wizards, it's Sarah Allers here with some of the members of the girls swimming team. I'm Kate Lerner. Paige Bassigal, Katie Smolar, Molly Miller. Now I know the swimming team did amazing this year in general, but you four did exceptionally well, all qualifying for states. What event did you qualify for? Uh, the 400 freestyle relay. Yeah, I'm on the relay too. I'm on the relay as well, also with the 200 free, 500 free, and 100 free. I'm on the relay too. What kind of preparation goes into each practice in order to succeed at such a high level? Well, we start off with a really intense preseason. We practice six days a week, seven hours a day, and we try to get in around 15,000 yards, which is a lot. And uh, on top of that, uh, we were really motivated this year as a team. We set some really big goals for ourselves at the start of the season, and so far we've been able to meet them, and we're looking forward to just continuing that. Sometimes I feel like the swimming team doesn't receive the limelight that it deserves. Why do you think that is? Um, when you think of the swim team, you don't think of like your stereotypical high school sport, because when I think of high school, I think of going to the football games. You don't think of coming to a swim meet on a Thursday night. So it's kind of... Um, like a smaller sport per se, but we do perform well, which is nice. I think I could speak on behalf of everyone in Wizard Nation that we support you guys and wish you good luck in states. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Sarah Eiler signing off for BGTV. And that concludes this week's episode of BGTV. I'm Elisa Vasquez. And I'm Steve Leone. See, See you next time. time.